Amen. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Clark. Would you stand with me as we pray this morning? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you created, Father. We acknowledge you as our Lord, our God, and Savior, Father. You are the one who has been faithful, Father, from the very beginning. You are the great I am, the one who always was, who it is, and who is still to come, Father. You are sovereign in this world, Father. And there's nobody like you. So, Father, we pray that the word that delivered today, Father, is the word that's given by you. And I pray that you would speak through me today, Father, that you are allow me to shrink and that you will grow stronger and stronger, Father, that your word will go forth and accomplish what your desire would be. I pray that the word falls on ears that want to hear, but not just hearing, Father, but actually doing. Let us be doers of your word. So we thank you for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so... Again, good morning, everyone. Is it still morning? It's still morning. We've got about uh, 33 minutes of morning left. But it's a great morning. Although it may be raining a little bit, God knew exactly what we needed this morning. Uh, he brings the rain. He brings the sunshine. So uh, our blessing is, as we just sang this morning, that God's got a blessing for you. Please, please know that he has a blessing for every one of us who are obedient to his word. He has a blessing. So I am thrilled to be here this morning. I'm going to do all that I can to make this a, well, I'm going to do what the Holy Spirit asked me to do today, okay? Amen. I know some of you may have food cooking at the house already, get ready for what's going to happen later on this afternoon and all that, but the Holy Spirit has given me a word, and I will tell you that God is amazing. You know, that's a song that says God is. Amen. He is. Yes, that's all I need to say. Come on. Can we go now? Because yes, oh, he is. God is. He is so powerful. He is so good and so loving. Guys, here's a plug. You want to just plug again. But if you want to feel, truly feel the love of Christ, you need to be here on Wednesday night for Bible study. Or to be on Facebook if you can't be here in person. If you want to feel that love, today is, in today's uh, prayer today, there were some, uh, <clears throat> some testimonies uh, and some prayer requests uh, that were given today that spoke to this message this morning, I leaned up to the pastor and said, man, um, everything that's been said this morning is, is directly connected to what we're going to talk about uh, in this message. So pray with me, pray for me this morning that uh, we deliver God's word according to, uh, to his will. So again, we've already established that we all are going through something, that we need something. But, you know, today's world, guys, it's not quite what God created it to be. You know, he created it something that was uh, perfect. And remember, each time he created something, he looked at it and said it was what? Good. It was good. In his own words, he said it was good. It was his plan that we would take care of his creation. It was his plan that we would be fruitful, that we would fill the earth, and fill the earth with love for him and love for each other. Now, that sounds like paradise for me. It sounds like paradise. However, the fall of man through Satan's desire to kill, steal, and destroy God's perfect creation allows sin to enter into this world through deception and lies. We still a part of this world today. Deception and lies. And we all know who the father of lies is, correct? Satan, yes. It resulted in chaos. Can we see the chaos in the world today? Just look at what's happened just this week, in the last two weeks. There's so much chaos. People don't worry about what's going to happen next. But for believers, we know our eternal destination. So our focus cannot be sidelined or distracted by what's going on. We be aware and alert, but we know where our eternal destination lies. So it resulted in chaos. It resulted in death, which is, what not, which is not what God had uh, created us for. We were banished from a perfect paradise and a perfect life, but even more, separation from God the Father, which is even worse. And today, guys, not much has changed. Today in this world, there are many people who are looking to every source and every resource, other than God the Father, for peace, for a sense of purpose, for self-worth, 
They're trying to understand why there's, there's trouble in our life in this world. They're looking for something to feel what can be described as a, as a void in our lives. Anybody ever feel like there's a void in your life, there's a hole, there's something that I just can't, I can't put my finger on it, but there's just something there. But do we resort to the Word of God? Many of us up to some of those help, help books. You see those on the bookshelves? How to be, how to be better. They are there trying to tell you something that this Bible here, the Word of God, gives you instructions, as our, our Reverend has said many times, and, and I still use this basic instructions before leaving the earth. We got everything here that we need, everything. But again, we have that void. And again, these help help books really can't help us. They can only help us in this life, temporarily. They can't help us in the life to come. So when you think about being a better person, about being successful, or discovering your purpose about yourself, uh, understanding life's trials, and, and sometimes even asking yourself, you know, what's my purpose? And about trying to figure out what their purpose is, where they're headed, what they're supposed to do. We got a lot of our young people um, out in the world today out on their own as they have grown up. They're trying to figure out, you know, who am I? They're trying to, as, he, as we said when I was growing up, but I don't know if they say this now, but trying to find myself. Trying to find myself. Trying to find myself. Let's see something. I think I'm right here. <laughs> I'm trying to find myself. And, and I'm laughing even at myself because of the time, guys, when I was trying to find myself. But I was trying to find my purpose. I was trying to find the reason for my existence. I was trying to find uh, something to make me feel good about me. I was trying to find what made my flesh feel good and what made me look successful in the eyes of others, including myself. I was looking to so many things other than looking to the Word of God. So I call this message today the life-giving, the life-giving Word of God, the life-giving Word of God. You know, God created us out of love, for he is love. Wouldn't you agree with that? Amen. God is love. He is love. He created us for the purpose of experiencing his love. Not just because it's love, but just think about it, experiencing the love of God. I, only, I can only imagine what Adam felt like after God breathed the breath of life into him. and He became a living being that he was able to stand up on two feet and stand right in front of uh, the creator of all the universe and have an intimate personal relationship with him, knowing that the God of all creation created him out of love and what that must have felt like. We've talked many times about people who've had these near-death experiences where they, they've gone and they've, they've seen, uh, uh, they say they've seen Jesus, they've stood before him and wanted to stay because they felt a love that they never felt before. Amen. You know, sometimes we, we uh, as we grow up and we, we, we're, we're dating and meeting people, sometimes we say, well, that, I've never felt a love like that, you know. No, that's, that's not the love I'm talking about. I'm talking about the pure love of the creator, that like agape love. Mm -hmm. That love is second to none. He created us for the purpose of experiencing that love and also of sharing that love. He even gave us some good works to do. Gave us good works to do that reflect his image because we were created in his image. Reflected in the way that we care for his creation with love and also how we care for each other. So remember, guys, he created us that way. We still have a challenge and obligation today to take care of each other in the body of Christ. But we live in a I got it world. I can handle it. I can do it. I'm good. Anybody good? <laughs> I mean, that's the world we're living in today. And we got this from all these self help books that tell us that you can do it. You can do it. You can be anything that you want to be if you want to. Well, I'm telling you that you can do all things in Christ, but you have to be in Christ. Amen. And when you're in Christ, you want to do the things that Christ is calling you to do, not what you want to do. And that's when we really, that's when we really discover what our purpose is for this life. Many find themselves in daily struggles, guys. Been stressed. Anybody been stressed? I've met some people most recently who are stressed out trying to figure out what next. I've met some of them that even 
talked about being angry. They don't understand why, and some uh, understand why. And I've even had a couple tell me that they're angry with God because God allowed them to make decisions in their life that they made. They have put them in a position that they don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. They're angry with God. You know what I said to them? I said to them, uh, maybe young man, it's, and, and, I, and, and I'm praying for this young man every day. There are four people I've met most recently um, in the last few weeks that I'm praying for. Um, and, and I don't know if they're looking or listening, but one, her name is uh, Dejanae. Dejanae, I want you to know I mention your name because I love you. You were created by my creator, my father, my lord, and, and, and I love you. I'm praying for Donald. I met Donald down at, um, uh, at a restaurant uh, one Sunday afternoon, uh, my wife and I. And, and my wife and I had an opportunity to minister to him, to tell him that God still loves him no matter what you've done. He still loves you. Um, there was a young man at Verizon, his name was, was, I think it's Garland, I'm not sure, but if you're looking, you know who you are, and God knows who you are. And I'm praying for you that God will give you peace in your spirit because he was so messed up, he was so angry because of how people were responding to him. He couldn't fix a problem right away for a customer, and the customer, again, uh, didn't respond in a godly way, and, and he kind of retorted, I don't, I don't have to deal with that, I don't have to listen to him. Well, I said to him, I said, Oh, you believe it? He said, I believe that there's a higher powers, but do you believe it's coming back? Uh, well, yeah, um, but we don't know when. I said, exactly, we don't. I said, so when he comes back, be doing something that is great, something that's honorable, something that's good for someone else. Don't let this be the last act that you may ever do in your life. So I'm praying for him. And a couple of weeks ago, I was on the phone talking with someone trying to get a bill paid. And I asked the young lady, I said, can I pray for you? And she said, oh my goodness, I can't believe you asked me that. Yes, I got so much stuff I need prayer for. I do. And she began to just rattle off some of it. So April, I told you I'll be praying for you at this church. And we're praying for you that God will reveal himself to you in such a way that you will know that he's there. You don't have to worry because he has your best interest at heart. And guys, remember that when we go through tests and trials, sometimes tests and trials come from the Father. He allows us to be tested. He allows us to, be, to go through trials because it builds our endurance and our ability to endure in this sinful, wicked world until his son, the Lord of all creation, returns and takes his people, his true believers, his true believers, true believers, home with him. True believers. So I want to focus this morning on uh, the word that brings life and brings life abundantly, not only in this life, but also in the life to come. So if you would, please turn with me to uh, John uh, chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. We're going to take a look at that passage of scripture for just a moment. So this portion of the, of the uh, message is interactive. Okay, which means I need you guys to participate with me. Okay, is everybody going? Okay, yes. everybody good? Yes. All right, everybody's in, right? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Any concerns? No, no concerns. Okay, so I'm going to read the words here from uh, from from John uh, chapter one, verses three through five, and this is what I want you to do. I'm sorry. Uh, for one through five. This is what I want you to do. Every time I say the word, word, I want you to say Jesus. Okay? Every time I say the word, word, I want you to say Jesus. You got me? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. All right, let's test it. Let's test it. Okay. Word. Jesus. Word. Jesus. Word. Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus that stirs the pot. You know, I remember Charles Barkley's making a comment that, uh, that he was a straw that stirred, it, stirred the pot. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus stirs. He stirs the heart of everyone, whether you're for him or not. Because, again, there are many who call him on the name of God, who call him on God and saying God, but there are many who won't utter the name of Jesus. And Jesus is the one who came and he laid his life down that we, that we, 
could live with him for eternity. Amen. All we have to do is accept him. And when were we saved? When we believed. When you believed is when you were saved. So, all right, word. Jesus. Okay, all right, just testing you. Just testing you, okay? Just testing you. All right, let's go. In the beginning, the word Jesus. already existed. In the beginning, the word Jesus. already existed. Means he was already here, right? All right. The word Jesus. was with God, and the word Jesus. was God. Did you hear that? Yeah. The word Jesus. was with God, and the word Jesus was God. Without debate. Without debate. He existed, he, the word. Jesus. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word Jesus. gave life to everything that was created, and his life, whose life? Jesus. Okay, that's good, that's good. Brought light to everyone. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, mm -hmm. and the darkness can never extinguish it. Guys, let me tell you something. And you know this. I'm going to have to tell you, because all of you guys, you know, you believe us in Jesus Christ, you're walking in his light. And I can tell you, no matter where you're walking, may it be the hop down the hallway at your house, down the hallway at work, you're walking down the aisle of the grocery store, no matter where you are, even on the golf course, we experience that, that when you're walking in the light, people take notice. People take, even, even, perhaps I went, I told you, I went to play some golf last week, this week, and I played, played with a guy, and man, he was, not every word, but every fifth word was one of those, you know, you know long, short, long words. And uh, but I could tell by the end of this, he was bothered. He was bothered. And it had nothing to do with how good I am. It had to do with the Holy Spirit was convicting him. Amen. But hey, this, this guy has been sitting here riding with me all day long. He has not uttered not one of those words, but they have been going on and on and on all day long. But something must be wrong with me. Okay? Something must be wrong with me. So again, the word Jesus, Jesus. already existed. Okay? He was with God. And he was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him. And nothing, absolutely nothing, was created except for him. The word gave life to everything that was. Come on now. Come on now. Hey, some of you guys are going to sleep. Hey, Rob. Okay, thank you over there, sir. Okay. Some of you guys are going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. Because I might throw one in your word. Okay, just test me. All right, so the light shines through the darkness, and darkness can never extinguish it. So I want to submit to you today. We're looking for everything to try to figure out our place in this life. We need to be focused on our place in the life to come. We need to be doing everything we can to make sure that our place, and we're securing, helping to secure places for others that we may meet to experience the same thing we experience as true believers in Jesus Christ. The word. Jesus. All right now. Okay. And that is his love. Giving them an opportunity to experience the love of Christ and also take part in the salvation which is to come. So I submit to you today, and we're going to pause on the test, okay? All right, I'm going to pause. Okay, come on. All right, so when I say the word until, until I come back to you, okay? I'll, let, I'll let you know when we start up again, okay? We're going to pause right now. So, uh, but I submit to you five points today, okay? And what I want to submit to you is this. It's that the word of God is God breathed. The word of God is alive and is active. The word of God is quick and is powerful. The word of God is life to those who find it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is also eternal, which means it's always. Yes, sir. Never yeah. ending. First point, the word of God is God breathed. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 tells us that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is what true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Now, guys, sometimes we don't want to know what's wrong in our lives. Right. 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 But you know what? The word of God is inspired by the creator. He says it's useful. It teaches us what's true. And when you know what's true, 
you can realize if I'm on the right path or not. That's right. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. That's right. So come on. Don't be upset when you correct it. God correct, corrects those he loves. That's right. If he never corrects you, he, he will allow you to continue to lead and walk down a path of destruction. So he corrects us because he loves us. And he wants us to do the right thing. That's right. And he also uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Do we have any of God's people in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody here? Yeah. Anybody here on God's side? Yeah. All right, come on now. So my question to you is, are you doing his good work? Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. Are you doing his good work? Yes. Are you doing his good work in, in your home? Yes. yes. Are you doing his good work in the church? Yes. Are you doing his good work in the community? Yes. All right. Because, again, the good work never stops. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't yes. want you to think that I believe that every situation is going to be perfect because it's not. Sometimes God puts us in the most difficult uh, situations and difficult places because, again, he wants to strengthen our ability to endure. He wants to strengthen our ability to trust in him. He wants to strengthen our ability to see his work and join him in his work more than just our work because the work that God has prepared for us is far greater than the work that we can ever, ever, ever imagine. Now, the word of God was penned by man, and this often quoted verse that we just read, it identifies God as the author of all scripture, divinely inspired, God breathed and directly from God, not from the will of the writers he used to record it. You got me? God inspired. He used man to write it, but it was not by man's will, it was by the will of the Lord. The Bible doesn't spell out how the mechanics, uh, spell out the mechanics of how God inspires the writers, but makes it clear that the ultimate source of the word himself is God. And verse 17 again explains why God will continue. He continues to communicate with his people, with us, his people today, so that we who serve God may be thoroughly equipped for every, again, every good work. The word of God reminds us that his truth and love is designed to guide us in all aspects of our life. What that means is, is that we don't have to put God in a box and say, okay, we'll open you when I get to the hard stuff. He wants to be part of everything, every moment, 24 hours a day. How many, I hear somebody tell me how many minutes was in a day, how many seconds in a day. It really don't matter. He wants to be part of every one of those, every second of your day, every second. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God the Father. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God the Father who created the lights and the heavens. He never changes. Now, um, we're in the 21st century. So it's been a long time since creation, don't you think? But yet, the God of all creation, he never changes. All right? He never casts a shifting shadow. You know what that means? He never tries to fake you out. Mm -hmm. He's true to his word. He is, I am. And you don't have to worry about, is he different today? Is he in a good mood today? All right? Do I need to be careful what I say to him today? You don't have to worry about that with the Father because he never, never changes. God's living word is not something that we just read or we just listen to and then we go about our business and forget it. We have to look with great intent into the perfect word, Jesus, do that with myself, the perfect word, Jesus, that gives freedom and to focus on him by doing what he says to do. James 1.25 tells us, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah. But I want you to understand what I just said. If you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Sometimes we think that God's going to bless us just for the sake of blessing us. There's a blessing in obedience, guys. And I will tell you, the more obedient you are to the will of God, I, I can tell you how joyful that is. That was a feeling of joy. 
when you're obedient to God. It just feels great. Not that we're always obedient because we're still human and we don't make mistakes, but when you know that you're following the will of God, you know that you're in the right place. If we let God's message penetrate our hearts and do its work deep inside of us, it would change our character, it would change our behavior, it would change our lives, and it will also change our eternal future or our eternal destination forever. Remember when you first came to Christ, how you felt? You felt different, didn't you? You felt new. You're so giddy. You couldn't, you couldn't hold it to yourself. I just have to tell everybody that I came in contact with that, you know, I love Jesus and this is what Jesus has done for me. But guys, understand that as we take on the character and the nature of Jesus Christ, it becomes who we are. We become more mature and not having the giddy feeling in it anymore doesn't mean that it's not real. It doesn't mean that, that you don't love them as much as you always did. What it means is, is that you've taken on their character. You become more like him and you understand what your purpose is. You understand your purpose is to glorify God in everything you do and to witness to as many people as he gives you the opportunity to. Amen? Amen. Amen. I present to you uh, point number two. The word of God is alive and it's active. And we say the term uh, alive, we mean that it's living, having life. It's not dead. It's energetic. It's moving, vital, breathing, vigorous, existing, and functional. It's just a few words to describe uh, the word alive and Active meaning effective, it's powerful, and it produces a desired result. The word of God is vibrant. Anybody had an experience with Jesus in here? Anybody? Was he static or was he vibrant? Vibrant. Was he was he uh, slow and lifeless or was he energized? Energized. Okay. And it, is his word or work he's doing it was it productive or was it just kind of a waste of time? Productive, okay. All right, so well, you guys must be reading my notes here because it says the word of God is vibrant, it's dynamic, it's energizing, and it's productive. You guys read, my, you got it up there? Okay, come on now. All right, somebody read my notes. But that's okay, that's all right. It's not static or idle in the lives of genuine true believers. The Apostle Paul explained the word of God is at work in those who believe. The word of God is at work in those who believe. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. It's a living word that carries the power of life and the power of transformation. Anybody been transformed? Amen. The Romans tells us to, to, to transform us you know, by the way we think. We think differently when we come to Christ. It's not all about us, but it's about Jesus. Huh? Amen. Amen. It's a persistent word. What do I mean by persistent? Can you hear that? He's always knocking. He's always pursuing you. He's right there just waiting for you to say, I for the unbeliever to say, Lord, I surrender to you. Uh, I realize I'm no good without you, and I realize I'm headed down the wrong path, path of destruction, and I want to surrender my life to you, that I might glorify you in everything that I do, that I might be able to participate in the eternal life of salvation that Jesus died for and brought into the world. He's persistent, always there. Always. It's a word that is active in us, the word of God is active in us, until our very death. Until our very death. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, well, the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it judges. Hear me now, because we think sometimes we don't have to, we can't judge, but yes, judges. The word judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It exposes the attitudes and the thoughts of the heart. The word of God is our definitive offensive weapon against the assault of a spiritual enemy. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness? What did he, 
What did Jesus whip out? The word. The word. Jesus. He whipped out the word. And what did he say? That man should not live by bread alone, but for what? Every word. You can say it now. Every word. Every word that comes from the mouth of God. All right? So that's what Jesus used as his weapon against uh, the enemy. You can find that in uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. And his example, guys, is an example for us today on how we should respond when the enemy comes against us. Even in our own flesh. Because, guys, we can be our own worst enemy sometimes. Because we would disregard the word of God to try and get what it is I want. I know what I want. I, you know, uh, I want what I want when I want it. Yeah. And you guys are going to find it very hard to believe. I, I know, but I used to say that. <laughs> I did. I used to say that. I want what I want when I want. <laughs> Does that sound crazy? Yeah. But I used to say that. But I understand now that I want what God wants for me. And I want it when He wants it for me. Because He may know I'm not quite ready for it. But I'm growing, when I'm ready for it, and, and, and I'm ready to uh, use it for His purpose and uh -huh. glorify Him, uh -huh. and He'll give it to me That's abundantly. Right. Right. Abundantly. The description of the word as living means that it has vital power. It's inherent to itself. It is not dead. It is living. And again, it has the ability to bring life and life more abundantly. Point number three, the word of God is quick and is powerful. And I'm going to use these references when I talk about the word being quick and powerful because it refers to four things here. In my notes, it refers to the will of God, the truth of God, the Son of God, and it also refers to the good news of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.4 tells us that Jesus gave his life for our sins just as our Father, just as God our Father planned. So understand that Jesus just didn't come and give his life. It was planned. God knew that we need a Savior. We knew, he knew we needed a perfect sacrifice for our sins, one that we didn't have to go to the altar anymore and burn any more animals for sacrifices because all those did was kind of cleanse us of sin. But the life of Jesus Christ not only cleanses us, but it took away our sins forever. And just know that, yes, we still live on this life. We're still sinners, yet saved by the, the grace of Jesus Christ. But when we sin, guys, we can ask for forgiveness right away. We can ask for forgiveness. And the key is that Jesus died and he was able to bring us back into relationship with the Father. Back into relationship with the Father. If you remember in the beginning, because of sin into the world, we had separation from the Father. So we're back. We can have a relationship with God, the Creator. The Word of God also refers to the truth of God. When Jesus was praying just before he was to be crucified, uh, and he was with the disciples. He said in John 17, 17, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. Teach them your word, which is true. And again, this is Jesus' prayer to the Father that he would make the disciples holy by God's truth because his time had come to leave them. But yet when he left us, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And I will tell you that I prayed this morning as I pray always and ask the Holy Spirit to be with me, that the Holy Spirit would utter the words today as opposed to Dave Nichols, because again, the Holy Spirit gives all truths. Not Dave Nichols, I want you guys to understand that. The word also refers to the Son of God. And it says, so the word, Jesus. Okay, okay. The word Jesus, Jesus. became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. We see that in John 1, 14. And lastly, uh, referring to God is quick and powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful. Uh, okay, hang on. I'll, I'll point to you next time, okay? I'll point to you. I'll give you a clue. Uh, you, got, you, got to see, uh, you got to see when we're singing in the choir and Eugene is giving us the uh, direction. Sometimes he'll do this. Which means keep singing the same thing over again, or he'll black this is, and me go back to the top, or he's like this, go back to the top. When I put my hand up, just say Jesus, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we need some order, okay? We need some order in here. 
Uh, well, isn't, isn't this wonderful to have a great time Amen. discussing the Word of God? Amen. Jesus. All right. Let me say that again. Are we having a great time discussing the Word Jesus. of God? Isn't that something? All right. All right. So, First Peter two thirty three tells us where you've been born again, but not to a life, guys, that would end quickly. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Hey, you say Jesus, you like it, okay? You say which time you want to, and you're right. So guys, understand, the actual words from the Bible are from the Father himself, and they have the full ability to complete change and transform every one of us if we are willing to work with the truth. And sometimes people don't want to know the truth. I can't figure that one out. You know what they want to know? They want to work off and live off of what my truth is. Okay? And my truth ain't going to save nobody. All right? If you're looking for my truth to save you, you're in trouble. Jesus said that you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. How many people in here are free today? How many of you are free? How many of you love it? it, it let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to die off for just a second. Let me tell you something. Having worked for the same organization for 25 years and been in the same industry for 40 years and not having to do that anymore, Monday through Friday, is liberating. I got to tell you, every morning I get up, I feel great. Okay? And, uh, that doesn't mean that I haven't gotten bored already because I'm used to having to do stuff. But I got to tell you what. Just the fact that I don't have to get up and go anywhere in the morning anymore, boy, that's freedom. But even more so, when I think about what Christ has done for me, the freedoms that he allows me to have in this day, that is true, true freedom. Jesus again said that you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. But, but, you have to first know the real truth. You have to know the real truth before the truth can start to work in you and set you free. That's why King David said we must meditate on the words of the Bible so we can understand the true meaning and how all of these divine truths can be applied to our daily lives. Remember, we just don't read it or hear it and then forget about it. We need to meditate on it so we can understand how to apply it to our daily lives. And here's the uh, plug again for Bible study, for those of you. <laughs> Meditating on the Word. Uh, if you can be here on Wednesday night, or if you can be on Facebook, that's how if you get the Word, get the Word. Did I say Word? Jesus. All right. However you have an opportunity to spend the evening with Jesus, get it. I will tell you that there's nothing like being here amongst believers and like-minded people who love the Lord with all their hearts. There's nothing like it. And I have to tell you that sometimes we read these, uh, the words, we read them time and time and time and time and time again, but all, all of a sudden it just jumps off the page because it doesn't have a different meaning, but it has a greater meaning. And it begins to infiltrate your body, your mind, your soul, your marrow, your joints. It infiltrates every part of you. And you can actually feel the word Jesus. come alive in your body. Yes. So I, I I just urge you, if you have an opportunity, please join us on Wednesday nights. Point number four. You guys still with me? Yeah. All right. The word of God, Jesus. all right, word of God is life to those who find it. You hear me? The word of God is life to those who find it. Proverbs 4, 23, uh, 20 through 23 tell us, my child, pay attention to what I say. Hear me. It says, listen carefully to my words. Jesus. Don't look sight, uh, lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, but they bring life to those who find them. I'm a walking testimony, guys, that the word of God Jesus. brings life to those who find them. It brought yeah. life to me. You know, I was living and breathing before walking uh, in the wrong direction. You know, standing on uh, an escalator that just carried me along as long as I was willing to stay there. It's uh -huh. carried me along on that wide road of destruction. Uh -huh. But 
the penetrating word and the persistent word kept knocking, kept knocking. Sometimes, sometimes the Lord allows us or even puts us in a position that could be at our lowest point, to experience our lowest point in our life before we realize that we need him. That I can't fix it, I can't change it, I can't do anything about it. Lord, I need you. I need you. And I, just for a second, I'll bring this up. Some of you have heard about my experience with smoking. But I smoked for 28 straight years. And one evening on July 16, 2011, the Lord took it away. You know why he took it? Because I surrendered to him. Thank you. I surrendered to him. I didn't say, okay, all right, since this is final, final time, all right. I stopped. No, that's not what happened. What happened was, I raised my hands to the heaven. I said, Lord, I surrender to your will. I need you. I need you. And when I said, I need you, would you please remove this from me? It was gone. It didn't take a day. It didn't take a week. It didn't take a month. It didn't take going to the store and buying gum, patches, going to get shots. I didn't have to have any of that at that very moment. The urge to do what I had done for 28 straight years, at least 10 times a day or more, was gone. Hallelujah. It was gone. So the word, Jesus, Jesus, is life to those who find it. The word of God brings honor and safety as Solomon urged his sons not to deviate from the path of godly wisdom, which is the word Jesus. of God, either to the left or to the right, which he meant, stay right on the path, guys. Stay right on the path. I'm right here. Stay right here. Don't get off those. When you get off, you got other things trying to pull on you, trying to bring you out of where you are, trying to take you into the dark and stay in the light. Stay in the light where you can see what it is I'm trying to do in your life. This vital power of God's message exists with the ability to pierce and penetrate the innermost depths of the human soul. It can cut through any obstacle and access and inspect even our unspoken, you hear me? Unspoken thoughts and hidden secrets. Mark 10, 26, you can find that it tells us that it can cross-examine and judge the attitudes of our hearts. So understand that you can't hide from God. You can't hide nothing from him. Your thoughts, you can't fool him. And I've often said that when you get dressed in the morning, you look in the mirror, God created us in what? His image and likeness, all right? So when you're looking in the mirror, which is supposed to maybe a piece of him is looking back at you. And if you can look and smile and be content with what you see, that's a great thing. But if you gotta look away, you think maybe something's wrong? I can't even look at the creation that God made because I, I don't like what I see either. Can you, can you imagine what the Holy Spirit might be uh, trying to get you to see? God has perfect, purposely left a vacuum or a hole, or you can call it, call it a void in each one of us. He left it in our soul. He created us. And the only thing that can fill that hole or that void is God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Every one of us still has that little hole in our heart, in our soul. And, and, and nothing we do, nothing we have can seem uh, to fill it. No matter how much money we have, no matter how many possessions, how many houses, how many cars we have, no matter, matter how many loving children we have, there is still something missing. Yeah. And none of these things can completely fill that little hole that all of us have in our soul. Again, absolutely nothing on this earth can fill it. But yet there are those who are literally chasing after the wind, trying to figure out, find everything and anything to fill that void. And no matter how many toys we buy, with the money we have, nothing they chase will ever fill that void in their souls. Amen. So it continues. The only thing that can fill that hole in your soul is finding 
and then entering to, listen to me, a true, say true, true. a true, personal, loving relationship with God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Nothing else will fill that void. And since God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are totally perfect, they, there's no darkness with them. There's no dark side to their personalities. So they and they alone are the ones who are capable of giving you perfect love, unconditional love, and giving you what no one else or nothing else in this life can give you. This is why the Bible tells us that we must find peace, that we will find peace that surpasses all human understanding once we have accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and have become truly, truly, I say, born again. That peace we find is a result of finding the one true person who can fill that empty void that's on the inside of each and every one of us. And that one person is the Lord God Almighty himself. Because the word of God is living and active, we should allow the word to be a lamp to guide our feet. We should allow the word to be a lamp to guide our feet. You can find that in 2 Peter 1.19. We should also allow it to be a light to illuminate our path through this light. Be a light to help show us how to navigate this world in a way that's pleasing and honoring unto the Lord God. And I'll submit to you my final part. The word Jesus of God is eternal. 2 Peter 1, 23 through 25 tells us, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living <coughs> word Jesus. of God. Did you hear that, guys? Amen. If you're in Christ, your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal, living, active, quick, powerful, eternal word of God. As the scriptures say, people like grass, their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades away. But the word Jesus. of the Lord remains forever. Forever. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 tells us that God saved you by his grace when you believed. He didn't say, he, he, he didn't say he gave us a list of things that we had to do. Amen. He said when you believe. When you believe. And for that reason, we can't take credit for any of it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things that we have done. None of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. Here in church, you are God's masterpiece. He created you how? In his image and his likeness, right? You are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Jesus Christ so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Anyone doing the good things God has planned for you? Are we doing the good things that God has planned for us? Come on, Eugene, I'm just about done. So we enter into God's eternal rest. We receive God's free gift of salvation by grace, mercy, but yet by faith alone, not by anything that we can do on our own, not through these self-help books, not through the uh, use of uh, illegal uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, trying to, uh, or, or palm readers, and we, 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 don't, we don't have salvation through any of that. We receive salvation through faith alone, through the life-giving power of God's word, which is Jesus. So God saved you by his grace when you believe. Don't, don't try to take, take credit for it. Just live in it. So the word of God is living. It's alive. It's powerful. It's quick. It's God breathed. You can trust it because the living word of God lives in us. Every one of us who are here. But I challenge you today, church, remembering that we are the body of Christ. And as God lives in us, it's our job and our responsibility to share it with as many people as we have the opportunity to. Not just to keep it to ourselves, not just to exhibit it when we come through these doors, but everything that we do when we leave here should be 
exhibiting. People should be saying, hmm, there's something different about that person, and I want to know what it is. People should be asking you, and I've asked this question once before, if we were in a court of law today, would there be enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? Is there enough evidence other than your word? And people look at your walk and tell that you are different. So today, I offer, today is a great day. Today is another day that the Lord has made. I am joyful, and I know that you are too, that we are here. And I will tell you guys that if there's anyone here today that has not made the decision to give your life to Christ, or if you said it years ago, but didn't quite understand it, today is a perfect day to say, word, Jesus. I trust you. I surrender to you. I want you to come in, into my life. I want you to be active and alive in me. I want you to be powerful. I want you to transform my life into what is pleasing unto you. Because my life has been bought and paid for by your death, your blood, your sacrifice. And it's because of your resurrection that you were able to take with you from the enemy the keys to death, the keys to the grave, that the grave and death has no longer has any power over any of us. Because if we live our lives for you, then our souls are secure. Is there anyone today Anyone? Amen. Amen. Well, we will also offer that if any visitors, I, I see a couple of visitors here, which we happen to have you. Brody, it's good to see you, man. I can't tell you how my heart was uh, just uh, joyful when I saw you walk through the door. So thank you for being here. Uh, Mom, we happy that you're here. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you every uh, Wednesday night and Sunday. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but that's wonderful. Uh, did I miss any visitors here today? Anyone? Those of you who are watching on Facebook, we want to thank you for joining us today. And, and I hope that this word that you received today uh, has given you um, something more to meditate on. Something more to chew on. Because it's worth it. It's worth it. And more than that, he's worth it because he gave us all. So I thank you for coming today and being with us. Is there anyone who would like to be part of this ministry today and mission for life? If it is, now will be the time for you to come. All right, but be prayerful. If you don't have a church home, be prayerful because we want to make sure that the Lord leads and directs you to the, to the right place. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right.